Finding that the Raggedy Ann doll had moved was certainly a surprise. We knew right away that there was going to be controversy. Eyewitness accounts referred to moving stuffed animals and patrons being tucked into bed. We did not prepare for such activity. Was the doll moved by Hannah? the doll moved, we regrouped to discuss the incident and to plan our next strategy. Okay, so we've been having a, a conversation about this um, moving doll, and, uh, and I'm the skeptic, so I've, I've of course, uh, stirred the pot here. Um, so we had a doll that we put in one place and went to dinner, and when we came back, it was in a different place. And, uh, Not slightly. So it was... It was <laughs> Uh, from, from downstairs to upstairs behind the closed door. So it was moved. It wasn't just fallen over. It had been moved. Now the question of course is what moved it? Excuse me. Or who moved it? <laughs> that was dinner. Sorry. Um, so I, and I'm saying we had no cameras on it so we can't say that it was paranormal because it could have been moved by somebody. Right? I agree, somebody could have come in here and moved it. Because we don't have physical evidence of the doll being moved from where Megan saw it. Where did you see it last? Well, okay. I'm going to wait. And I don't think I don't think anyone's ever going to be able to definitively prove at least through media or YouTube or anything that it's it that, it goes. Yeah, because everyone's just going to say it's fake. The only way it's going to be proved is if someone sees it for real, in real life, right in front of them. We finally decided to put a camera upstairs to record it while we were doing our investigation of the restaurant. I've got my Hi8, my ancient 1880s camera. Ooh. Don't, you're trying to film and walk at the same time, kind of tough. You make fun of me. Would I do that? Alright, is this where you put the doll when we left? Yes. Alright. She is still in the same spot. Oh. What's the matter? Heavy feeling in this room right now. After we left, the hi eight's microphone picks up a whistle. We repeat it louder so you can hear it. She changes her hair every time I see her. After we left the camera rolling on the doll, we return to the restaurant and bar to complete the final interviews and finally meet up with the rest of our crew, Sarah and Ross. He always just shows up for no reason. 
We still had a couple of hours left till the bar closed, so we went to the second and third floors to investigate the accounts of Hannah running up and down the halls. Megan took a photograph which looks like a man standing at the end of the hall. A few seconds later this photograph was taken of the same door, showing nobody there. We still had some time before our investigation started, so we went back to the cabin to check on the doll and investigate the upstairs. Is Hannah here? Who moved the doll from downstairs to upstairs? Humphrey? Was that your name? Are you Mr. Copeland? Why did you move the doll? No. You did not. Who moved the doll? Can you bang on something or touch Kevin or myself? So I just pulled my hair. Why did you just pull my hair? Getting your hair pulled is something Valerie has experienced before. We always ask the spirit to touch one of us. Valerie is the most sensitive to such things. Getting no further response from the spirit box, we head back to the restaurant to set up for our investigation there. As we got to the restaurant, the night receptionist was just starting her shift. Okay. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Karen. I work the front desk at the Saddleback. How so, long have you been here? Um, I worked here for eight and a half years. I left for two years and I've been back here for about four months. And you said you have not had any personal experiences yourself, Correct. but you've had your dog here. I have. And what has happened when your dog was here? My dog was sitting in the chair over here and it was here and he kept looking over in the bar area and he was giving me the creeps because he just kept staring and I do understand I do believe that you know there is something but he kept staring and then all of a sudden he got this deep growl that he kept growling and looking over here and I finally put him into inside his house his carrier and zipped him up because he was creeping me out 
While we were interviewing Karen, the hotel front desk manager's husband, Chris, asked us if we could check out his room on the third floor. As it turned out, his room is right across from where we took the picture of the man in the doorway. We were happy to check out the room. It turned out to be quite interesting. Temporal, yes. The main inn always creeps me out. And that's where we're at now? Yes. Okay. The main inn always does. <laughs> My wife gave me a room upstairs. I'm on the third floor. I'm like, oh, really? I like staying in the outer ends because um, it doesn't creep me out. The, you mean the cottages? You prefer to stay in the cottages yeah. than in the yeah. building here itself? Now, why is that? Is there something in here particularly that you feel? Oh, no, I don't know if I could say that. It just creeps me out. There's something, yes. Yes, there's something. It was here. It's very cold in this hallway. We've got air conditioner in Okay. <laughs> Oh, you get to see me, pictures of me, Wes. So, right now, we are all in Chris's room, which he is staying in room 20, yeah. which is the May West room. Yeah. Third floor. Third floor of the inn. And we're going to do a... I don't know if it is or not. Probably not. Okay. Right. Are there any spirits here that wish to speak with us? No. No. What is your name? Did you die in the inn? You did. How did you die? Can you touch one of us? Why won't you speak with us? <laughs> You're in Chris's room. Is it okay if Chris stays in here? Are you scared? Are you scared where you're at? Can you please tell us how you died? Whoa. What is that? Something pulled my leg. We had two cameras on Val when her ankle was pulled. Between the two angles, we saw a strange sequence of events. Just before Ross asked if the spirit was scared, 
He felt a need to lift his legs off the floor. When Val had asked a spirit how he had died, an orb floats by her left arm just before her ankle is pulled. Finally, the bar and restaurant was empty. It closed around 2.30 a.m. So we set up our investigation in the restaurant area. I started with an EMF sweep. Okay. Hold on. And we're just, right now we're going to follow All right. Kevin around. Uh, and we actually have pretty high EMF in, in this room, just standing okay. right here. I'm at a, uh, around the 2.5, 1.9. So the, the EMF's pretty high in here. A lot of electronics, I would assume, in here. The refrigerators are going to give off a lot of like EMF. Explain, um, Chris may not know, explain what EMF... Uh, electromagn it's, uh, EMF is an electromagnetic field. So uh, it gives off, all electronic items give off a, a proximity field, magnetic electricity. And um, the theory is that ghosts are made of electromagnetic energy. And, um, but uh, you can also, also be influenced into uh, creepy feelings when there's high EMF. S uh, other, thing, other theories, of course, is that is ghosts use the high EMF that's in a room to manifest. So when I, I'm doing a, what's called a sweep of the room, uh, I'm seeing just how high the EMF is in the room. And if we have a spike or if a, a short burst of electromagnetic energy could indicate that there's a, a ghost. But just having high EMF in a room just means there's a lot of electronics running. Some people are very, very sensitive to it. So, uh, I'm not. I could be probably inside an electromag, you know, inside an electromagnet and I wouldn't even notice it. But I think Val would probably go crazy. Yes. She's a lightning rod for that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, so this is our K2 meter. And there should only be one light lit up on this if there was, if there was no EMF energy right here. So, and it's a solid. Both Valerie and Sarah were drawn to a particular booth in the restaurant. So I pulled out the K2 meter in order to start a K2 session. However, there was a great deal of electrical EMF in the area. Okay, so there's something live here. There's something electrical probably right underneath us. It could be why we're, uh, you guys were being drawn to this booth. It's because there's a lot, there's a big EMF draw here. Eventually, we found a place without any interference, and we started an EVP session. So we've got a nice, quiet little corner here. There's no EMF. There's, there's no electrical wires around here. Okay, I have in my hand a recording device, and this recording device can record your voice, but we can't hear it immediately. We'll have to play it back to hear it. But if you try really hard, you can you could be heard on this recording device you have to talk very loud are you aware that you are no longer living what is your name if you can hear me can you make a noise Right at this moment, we caught our only EVP on our digital recorder for the two nights that we were here. If you can hear me, can you make a noise? After receiving nothing else on the EVP and the K2, we moved on to the spirit box. We received no further communication. While we were wrapping things up, Val felt inexplicably drawn to the men's restroom. So she took a camera and a digital recorder 
and went in by herself. Okay, so it's just me in the men's room here at the Saddleback Inn restaurant and grill, bar, hotel, cottage. I know there is a gentleman spirit that has been speaking to me since we've been here last, since last evening. I think there's been several. I don't know why you've stopped speaking to me. So what is your While she was in there, it was dead silent, except for an occasional beep coming from the camera. This is a sound that has never made before and hasn't made since. Every now and then it would go in and out of focus, which is something it usually does not do either. The dead silence continued for about 10 minutes until finally the recorder and the camera both picked up some sounds that Valerie could not hear. When did you die? It seems that we leave Lake Arrowhead with no real answers, but many more questions. This is the end of this investigation, but there'll be more. We left the doll in Hannah's room we hope she continues to be the happy spirit we met. As for the rest, that's for another day.